Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to everybody. Uh, it's nice to see you and to talk about what I'm doing during my daily life and daily practice on, on my practice. I'm uh, uh, an Italian dentist and I'm working in the north of Italy uh, in a very small <coughs> city close to Venice and I'm enjoying working with uh, all of the staff of my, of my practice like my father as you see here that uh, started the working and my sister that is a dental hygienist and uh, we enjoy working in, uh, with the staff of uh, uh, people with a dental assistant and a lab uh, technician. Actually, uh, what, uh, what are the questions of today? Here I write down all the questions that we will discuss today. And um, uh, the first of all, um, in the life of Vital Electronics Protocol, have you developed experience to improve it? Well, yes, I, my experience is with using both tools protocol together with biconometric systems. I will explain you what I'm uh, trying to say. And then uh, the techniques to, uh, to capture the diagnostic setup for planning is uh, intraoral prime scan, scanning with uh, uh, NCBCT and uh, usually, usually using, as uh, Sanjay uh, was talking, the dentition for partial adventurous jaws, but I'm using bone screws if necessary even in partial edentulism cases, but bone screws definitely for edentulism. And then I'm definitely using the immediate loading protocol with the uh, uh, screws, with the bone screws, as, you, as, uh, as I was explaining to you. And navident, navident is essential for simplified prosthetic chronometric steps, as, you, as I will explain to you. I'm using pterygoid implant and nasal implant if possible and if necessary. Uh, I have no experience with zygomatic implants. Um, I prefer using six implants in the lower jaw, six by five to six implants in the lower jaw, and seven to eight implants in the upper jaw. Uh, I'm using mostly burrs, even with also densification in the protocol, <coughs> but mostly burrs to place my implants. And um, I'm using the abutment planning just to explain uh, to the lab technician what I'm going to do and, why, uh, and uh, what to choose for, for, for the prosthetic part of the work. And uh, uh, how Navident affects your communication? Well, uh, yes, because with Navident, the treatment planning acceptances is definitely much better. So the main topics of today are totally day to job, immediate loading, as I was explaining to you, I'm always doing it, patient communication and lab communication. Just two minutes of what I'm doing every day, I'm using this kind of implants that uh, are heavy, uh, having um, chronometric connections, so there's a total angle of connection, of a button connection of 3 degrees, so it's 1.5 each side of the implant. I have a contact surface of 20 millimeters of uh, uh, sealing between the abutment and uh, the implant. I have a position in X that's not important because it's the chronometric con connection that gives you the tightness and the angulation as you want. And I have still uh, the stabilization screw. And uh, uh, these are the four factors that are important. The cone angle, the eighth of the conical contact surface, the tension of the prosthetic screw and the manufacturing tech tolerances. I'm going very fast because uh, I, want, I think this is uh, already new by you, but I, I take advantage of this technique because I don't use cementum, I don't uh, use a screw holes, it's better the aesthetics, it's simple, I use the technique one abutment one time and place the implant and the abutment <coughs> all the time. Uh, I gauge speed and versatility for the conclusion of the case. Um, I can use temporarily even the, the old prosthetic uh, prosthesis of the patient. Uh, I, I can do it for simple, multiple cases and total cases. So I use this, book, this big chronometric connection with the caps on the abutment, as you see, all the time. So I'm using these caps and I glue it in 
can be porcelain, can be um, even the zirconia or, or metal if you want. I glue it in, in this cup and then it's going to be connected by friction only to the abutment. And this uh, reduces the inflammation and uh, you gain the gingiva. So this is an example, for example, this is a um, desilicate crown uh, glued on these cups, on this cup. This is the healing that you get from the healing abutment, that's a peak healing abutment. And then you get this kind of, uh, of uh, healing, and then the, that's the final crown. And this is the way how you conclude the case. So just root the uh, crown and you put it in, you hammer it just a little bit, it's not something painful for the patient, it's, it's just to uh, get f correct friction and the, the case uh, is, is finished. In this case you have for the glue? Yeah, I don't have a glue. Okay. That's only friction, only friction. So, and that's the final, the, the prosthetic case. So I'm doing all my practice this way. So I have all this healing that, that you see. Mostly I'm trying to use always straight abutments because it's very simple. Then you can understand how precise should be the position of the implant. So if I don't want to use that much angular abutment, although I have it, the angulated abutment, I will try to, to make a straight one because it's, everything goes very, very speedily and simple, simplified. And this is, uh, the radio, these are the radiographs uh, that you uh, can understand. I have the implant, the abutment, this cup, and the ceiling. That, that's a desilicate crown, glued on the metal, as you see. And uh, the daily work is very simple. But with this system, I'm doing all my cases, as, you show, as I show you. And I, uh, I'm explaining you uh, because uh, in the upper jaw, not in the lower, but in the upper jaw, I'm using this system, the big bichromatic system, with the prosthetic work that is, has only friction and no holes, no nothing, no cementum, no nothing. I want to, to share with you all the, these cases that, that are quite big, but I, I, I don't have the time. This is, this is the upper, this is the lower jaw. But I want to uh, share with you this uh, small video that uh, summarizes everything with, that I'm doing. So, if you have a dangerous case, then uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the discrepancies between the upper and the lower jaw. Then you don't have reference point here. So, what, can, what landmarks, what, which point can you use for tracing? Nothing. So I'm, I'm using these bone screws and um, the rules of the bone screws I will uh, explain you later but uh, mostly at least two, three, three per each side that's correct even because if one gets lost or gets moving then you have the other ones to get precision and sorry, I to go back um, and um, and uh, uh, as soon as you place the bone screws, then you have to uh, discuss about uh, the prosthetic work, because these are one part of the work. But, but this is uh, what I'm doing, uh, is a wax up to make it uh, in the functional way, in the aesthetic way. Then I'm placing even in the wax up the bone screws, because it's very simple to view it in the CBC in order to get uh, the internal scanning and match it inside the navident. So what I get here is, uh, for example, the uh, planification. The planification is, is uh, uh, with a connect on a chronometric connection is all parallel of the implants. So I'm taking my time to place the implants correctly. And all of these are parallel. It doesn't look like parallel in the panoramic view, but uh, I, I can assure you they are parallel between two degrees each implant. So what I'm uh, using um, on the bone screws, then I'm importing also the wax up, and I match it very nicely with the bone screws because I can see it on the navident, and then I'm planning all the case uh, in this. All, all my implants 
and I'm planning even the abutment so I can tell to the lab which kind of height of abutment because they are all straight as I was telling you. These are all the planning <coughs> of all the implants and uh, after that uh, I uh, definitely uh, can only drill with help of navigate. Of course I'm using the one number as uh, Sanjay was telling me because it's mandatory to get precision to be uh, very very precise. So I'm using both screws, it's very simple because you ju just touch it and the system is recognizing the, the, screw, the bone screw. So it's uh, five minutes tracing and then you are done. You can work. You can follow exactly precisely the, the planning and uh, the other advantage is that you don't have to open the whole the gingiva of, of the, but you just make a very small incision. I do it for the gi attached gingiva. I want to have a good gingiva from the, the stipular side and also from the palatal side. And then I get, I'm <coughs> checking all my uh, drilling with the Evalunav and I'm checking, you see, the degrees of elevation of the implant, as you see here and they are get precise, precisely done. Then I'm squeezing the straight abutment, as you see, and that are the cups that are with the friction. And then I'm taking the impression that is done with the wax up transformed in the, the prosthesis, and then I'm finalizing the prosthesis uh, this way with no holes and uh, uh, no glue, no cementum, and that's, uh, uh, that's the way I'm doing the uh, dangerous cases. Which system is this? Uh, this is AON system, and it's a company, an Italian company, that is making this kind of, uh, of uh, implants and uh, abutment and uh, caps. Uh, so, so this is the way, uh, th this is the way so, I'm summarizing here the <coughs> steps. These are the steps that I'm uh, to the daily use. Analysis, uh, as uh, Sanjay was saying, is, is very important to, to select the case. Preliminary OPT and CBC or CBCT, mostly the OPT, uh, it's, it's based, it's, it's a good way just to check how is the bone and how is possible to do. Then I'm making a diagnostic wax up because remember, Navident helps us to place the implant according to the prosthetic work. So you, you, it's not only a place implants wherever there is bone, but it's according to the wax up and the prosthetic work. So it's very important the diagnostic wax up. Then uh, the fourth uh, point is bone screws to place it in the, in the, in the mouth, as I was explaining you and then place these bone screws, but you can use the landmarks on the diagnostic box up. I'm using the bone screws because it's very easy and uh, fast way, but you can use even other uh, devices that are re radiographically recognizable. And then, um, sorry, uh, yes, bone screws placement on patient's jaw, number six, operative CBC, I'm calling it operative CBCT, because uh, with this uh, CBCT I'm, and the bone screw together, I can plan the case. So I'm importing uh, the data on Navident and planning, and then into placement, post-op post -op versus pre-op accuracy, because that's an assessment that I'm using. It's optional, but I'm using it just to check what I'm doing. And then the, the prosthetic work. Uh, if I have time, I will explain to you how I'm doing the prosthetic work. The, the point is that with bone screws, you get accuracy during your implant placement. The problem of, uh, that Sanjay was explaining very nicely is that if you have teeth, you can use it as a tracing. But then, when you take it out, then you lose the accuracy. So then you cannot check if you are still accurate or not. With the bone screws, as soon as you place it, in, in, there in the mouth, then 
you can check even during the operation and uh, during the surgery if you are accurate or not. That's why I'm using it. So the first point, as I was explaining, is the anamnesis. I'm explaining everything and I'm showing the patient uh, what what is the planning, what is uh, placing an implant, not only drilling the bone, but placing an implant means that you have something in your head where <coughs> should be the tooth. So I'm starting showing the patient how and how is the way and in which way I want to place that implant because it's according to the prosthetic plan. And then, uh, as I was explaining, I'm choosing the bone screws when you do, I don't have landmarks, I don't have anything to trace. So I'm using a preliminary op op OPT, for example, because if a patient like this comes to your office and you don't have anything, any, le any reference, you just have, for example, the denture of the patient. Some information you get it in, even from the old denture of the patient. This is something very simple and fast that I can do it. I'm placing ten bond as a temporary cementum just to color the teeth and then a cellophane just to cover it and you take a, an OPT. It, okay, you don't have 3D, 3D dimension, but you still know that in the place of 6, if you have, for example, bone or not. So you have something in your head that something can be done with implant. So it's a preliminary uh, examination that uh, can help you and give you some information. Then you start with a diagnostic doxap, with a, a normal prosthetic work. I, I'm, we are checking all of our prosthesis in the postural way. So we are checking if the patient is working functionally, functionally but also according to, <coughs> to the postural part of, uh, uh, of, of the body. So um, the balance and everything, I, I, don't have it, uh, to, I don't have the time to explain these things. And then we are checking functionally and aesthetically the prosthesis. Uh, everything should be fine as it is here. Then I am checking in the models how is our discrepancies from the two jaws, and then comes the four point as I was explaining you the bone screws placement on the walks up on the walks up first because this you can scan it with intraoral scan and you have these landmarks that you can use it in the CBCT then. So first place the bone screws on the on the wax up as I show you. Right. So you can check it. How, and do you, how do you manage to, to place the bone screws, especially if they're a little bit long and uh, you have to fit it in the mouth? You, you choose a small one. Right? Yes, yes, you can choose very between very six small, millimeter, right? eight millimeter, ten, okay. twelve. You can choose whatever you like. I'm using the six millimeter, so okay. it's uh, normally or normally the the good ones for the denture. But for the mouth, better is 8, 10, or even 12 millimeters. Uh, it's, better. it's better. This is my strategy of bone screws on the patient jaw. So uh, at least two, three uh, bone screws uh, per side, per arch. So it's three plus other three, so six, five, six. Vestibularly or on the crest. That's the correct way. Don't put it uh, in the uh, online, in line, but just put it with different angulation because the system can understand the volume where you're working. Possibly not at the same level. Uh, length at least eight millimeter, but even longer. Uh, I'm using for the posterior part even the twelve millimeter because you have thick gingiva and normally you get. Uh, you get a lot of uh, thickness, and so you need a very length, a very long uh, screw. Protruding at least one two millimeter at least, because you have to see it on the uh, on the scanning or intraoral scanning. And uh, how how much time you have to do this? How much time before? Uh, you cannot do this and uh, doing the simplicity and planning. Okay, if you have time, you can do it. But I prefer doing. Two three days before the intraoral placing of the bone screws, because um, in this way I have the time during the evening to plan my case 
uh, in the correct way, maximum seven days before. How do the patient react in this uh, time of waiting? Oh, well, it doesn't have to be too much because it's, if it is seven days, then the patient has a bit complains about this course. Yeah, because they, they can't wear the denture or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you have to, um, to, 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 adapt to, the, to adapt the denture, yes. yes. But this is the, the way, uh, this is the reason why I don't want to do it seven days before, but just one, two, yeah, three days, one, two days before, so it doesn't have to complain then that much. Has it ever occurred to you during the operation to, 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 to put the implant exactly where the screw is so you have to remove the screw? Yes, it happened to me and okay. I take it out. I can check the accuracy to the other okay. screws, okay. so don't worry. If it's really in the right, in the wrong position, then I take it out. Okay. So that's the combination between intraolar bolt screws and the, with, in the CBC, in the um, walks-up. And then I take the operative CPCT because that, that, that CPCT is operative for me. So um, I'm importing, as I was explaining you, uh, the, the internal scan of the gingiva. That's important for planning the abutment, but also of the denture as well. That's, that's a denture. And then what I, what I want to know, what I want to see all the time is where is the tooth, where is the ginger, and where is the implant. So I can plan the correct abutment for the lab technician, for the lab work and for the lab communication. Then this I, I will already show you, so I don't want to lose time. And there is a, a tip here that you can use for making all implant parallel. And you can also uh, group all the, the, the implants and put them all together. And if you move one, everything, everything moves. So it helps you to understand if you can make it or you, if you can make it with six and with one you have to pick, make it in a different way. But it's a nice way that the Navidan has to help me making the, the um, chronometric connection the right way. And then comes the Navident implant placement, as I show you. Uh, I'm using in the upper jaw most of the time the head tracker because I don't like to have in the middle something that, uh, uh, that bothers me. So if I, it's possible in the upper jaw I'm using the head tracker. And in the lower jaw I'm using the jaw tracker B. Of course, uh, you, you cannot do differently. So then the day of surgery, the, the technician is giving me this denture that is having, you know, a kind of uh, um, horseshoe uh, holes here uh, where I will place the implant that I plan it inside that, uh, that part. And then is giving me the lab technician a kind of uh, uh, Braga, Braga plate, I would yeah. say, yeah. Braga plate that I'm using for just for that day to give the, to the patient to go home. I will explain you what I'm doing. And uh, this, uh, this is the surgery. All of you are experts, so I don't want to bother you about these steps because these are steps of uh, accuracy and to um, uh, checking the system in, in, in the mouth of the patient. Um, these are the calibrating of the uh, of a handpiece, and uh, uh, the you you know this this part is very is very is very fast because in three minutes all the bone screws are uh, scanned and uh, the system is perfectly working and you can start drilling just making a small incision as I was telling you and not doing any more uh, all the maxilla or all of the mandible opening of the bone, it's very, it's very uh, simple. I don't have the time to explain what are the stickers, but uh, they are helping me keeping the mouth open and working for one, two hours without getting the patient uh, uh, tired. These are small incision, and these are exactly the surgery of eight implants, so it's not, it's not a big deal this way. And for example, this is a way I, I was planning the econometric implant before the navigator. I was doing it with a two dental assistant, 
So that's my view. That's one view of a dental system and the other view. Just to make me parallel and accurate. I can do it with five degrees of uh, error by hand. But with Navident, I'm below one <laughs> degrees of manipulation of uh, error. So it's, it's much better because, as I was explaining to you, the system is, uh, uh, is 1.5 of chronometric uh, connection angulation. So I have uh, 3 degrees of tolerance. So this is the way I was doing it before, you know, opening everything. So it's it's very big opening, but in this way, with an ambient, I'm very more... Uh, minimal invasive surgery and even here as you see that this is a possible action plate and then uh, I'm checking the uh, accuracy as I was explaining I don't have the time and these are the abutments the straight ones as I was uh, uh, as I was telling you these are eight implants that are all of them parallel without a problem and then these are the caps that I'm using I'm removing the bone screws after the CBCT of the valinate, otherwise I cannot match it. So the bone screws have to be in the mouth and taking the CBCT so I can match it the two, the two of them. Then I remove the bone screws. I'm screwing the abutment. And I'm taking an, a, a, an analog impression. So I start now not using the digital uh, way of working, but the analogic way of working because it's, it's more simple. I'm checking with the X-ray that all the abutments and the caps are fitting together. And I'm taking an impression. That's a fit checker just to check that the caps are inside the horseshoe holes, as you see here and the, they are in correct indentation with the lower jaw. This is the weight I'm checking, that, that everything doesn't have to touch in the, in the prosthetic work. And then we're taking an analogic impression in that place. Uh, and I take the impression out. Sometimes cups are sticking in the mouth, but doesn't doesn't matter because that's not a precision impression, it's just as the, um, a, uh, an impression that uh, gives, gives you the idea where is it. And then I'm finally uh, finished my presentation telling you that I'm, um, I'm saying to the patient, just uh, uh, giving him this healing abutment that are made of peak, and I'm putting in the Brega plate the um, periodontal pack inside and I'm saying to the patient for today it's enough, you go home I'm just, it's very simple, as you see here I'm placing this the uh, peak is, uh, has, it has friction so for, for that day I don't want the patient to be in the practice and to mill on all the prosthetic and the finalizing, I want to do it the day the day later because I want to for the lab to have the time to do it correctly and the patient is tired enough to go home that day. I don't want the patient to be there again and still. And then starts the lab work. I, I have the time to, to do it. Okay. So Luca, thanks.